okay, okay, big day. We've got our sweatshirt. We've got our pigtails. We've got our eye black. And can I help you? Oh, no, I'm just admiring how you're practicing wearing your laboratory protective equipment. Usually the football players do this, but it's so cool to see the fans join in the ritual. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely not what I'm doing right now. I'm just getting ready to enjoy the game. I guess you're right that the players are trying to protect themselves. Personal protective equipment actually comes in all types and styles. And just like you, some scientists might only need to take some small precautions, whereas like the football players, some may need to take some pretty big steps to keep safe. These two things sound really loosely associated. Are you sure you want to use this as the tie-in? Yep. Hi, my name is Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. While we might already know there are certain rules we need to follow while working in a science laboratory, we might not know exactly why those rules matter other than to keep us out of trouble. So let's explore the exciting, the unexpected, and sometimes even scary facts behind the science of lab safety. I see you're excited to get to the ball game. Okay, we're just going to review the basics of protecting your eyes, your skin, and your respiratory system. First of all, your skin is actually your body's largest organ. And although the outer layers are technically dead, it's fairly easy for chemicals to penetrate through the tiny cuts or even seep directly through the skin. Similarly, our skin is generally not great at protecting us from extreme heat or cold. Oh, so we're gonna talk about how gloves keep stuff off your hands and they keep the stuff that's on your hands off your work. And I think you already talked about this. I really need to go. Yes, but also, in addition to gloves, many scientists wear laboratory coats and are required to cover all exposed skin by wearing closed toed shoes and long pants or dresses. While the laboratory coat is generally chemical and heat resistant, even our basic clothing can protect us by providing a layer to help reduce cuts and which we can quickly strip off if needed. You're much better off with a hole in your jeans than in your leg. Well, plus you look extra sciency. Wait, did you bring those with you? Always. Okay, so now let's talk about the eyes. I see that you're wearing eye black to make sure that the sun doesn't bounce off your cheeks and make it hard to see. I mean, yeah, this is mostly for selfies, but that is why the football players wear it. Well, scientists might not need to see the ball flying through the air in a long pass, but we do want to protect our vision in the long run. Eye protection usually comes in the form of goggles. In many cases, glasses style goggles are enough to avoid direct contact between harmful chemicals or other objects. However, if dealing with strong chemicals or dangerous pathogens that can be extremely harmful, a scientist might need to wear goggles that seal to the face or even wear a full face shield. You might have already seen me talk about masks and how they can protect us from chemicals, aerosols, droplets, but we haven't actually talked about why. So wait, wait, let me guess. It's because we need to breathe? Yeah, I knew you'd get this one. Okay, so I know I don't need all of that stuff to go to a football game, which I really need to get to, but if I was to work in a lab, what would I wear? Most laboratories have some strict requirements on what kinds of PPE you should need to conduct research. This will depend on the situation, so be sure to check your laboratory manual and any warnings on chemicals or other potential hazards that will tell you what kind of dangers you may face. And it's not just about what to wear. Long hair should be kept away from the face and certainly not be allowed near flames. Okay, well, yeah, this seems like a lot of work and I honestly don't even remember the last time I dropped something. You're certainly not alone in feeling that way. A 2013 study of laboratory researchers found that about 80% thought their laboratory was very safe, but about 50% of the same group said that they had in fact had an injury while working in the laboratory. You see, we commonly overestimate our abilities and underestimate dangers. And if that's not enough, just remember that getting in trouble for these things won't just affect you, but could affect your entire lab's success just like how we lost the last game on a technicality. Exactly. So what did you learn? Wear whatever the safety manual tells me so I don't get hurt or in trouble. And that the dorky stuff scientists sometimes wear is actually there to protect them. Okay, you ready to go? Oh, no, no, no. I'm actually just here for the food, which reminds me, we need to talk about why exactly you can't eat food in a lab. At... Next time. Go Hawks!